there's a huge number of benefits for everyone involved if we drive software development through automated tests. That's the core message of this book right here, Test-Driven Development by Example. I know that many have an allergic reaction to the simple sound of TDD. However, this book changed the way that I write code, which is why we'll be talking about it in this video. This is a completely different type of video for me, where I will be distilling and I will try to highlight the main lessons that I took from this amazing book. And maybe I will convince you to give it a chance. So what is the core argument here? Well, Kent Beck argues that there's a different way of writing code that consists in writing tests before the code itself. And the end goal by doing all of that is that you will get to a point where you have better software, easier to maintain, better quality, and that with the goal of simplifying the life of every stakeholder involved. And when I found this book, those reasons for adopting TDD made a lot of sense to me. I was working on a project where we had a lot of problems regarding quality, art to maintain, and all of that was impacting not only me, my team, but also the re end result of the software. So after leaving all of that in my day-to-day, -day, it was quite easy to relate to the main messages of the book. However, let me tell you that I have read this exactly book twice and I recommend you to do so. You will take different things from it by reading it when you don't practice CDD or when you have some experience with it. What does this book have so special? The book reputation precedes it. You just need a few pages to be hooked in the way that Kent Beck writes. His writing style is really engaging. He is telling a story, driving us through examples. Doesn't look like a typical technical book. And the best part about it is that Kent is a master on giving an easy way to understand complex topics. In the book, you will start with the context of why should you care about TDD. Also, after that, Kent Beck will take you in a journey through some practical examples written with Java. Don't worry about that. It's not that bad. It's easier to follow along. Even if you are a C-sharp developer, a JavaScript developer, a Python developer, it's easy to understand what is being written and the ideas are easily transferable to other places. And on the book, you will find two main examples, one that is a bit simpler and another one that has the complexity of touching the outside world. And also you'll find a, a set of tactical patterns to address common problems. So let's talk about the key takeaways of this book. By reading the book, you will understand the TDD process. We all know the mantra red, green, refactor. Here is really well explained and you have a clear picture why you should do it. There's also a huge emphasis on test quality. And when I talk about test quality, I mean the quality of the code written on those tests. There's a lot of concerns about things like having tests as documentation, and you will learn a set of tactics to improve those tests and have a better result by the end. The other main idea across the book is incrementalism. You will see over and over again the importance of going one step at a time, of taking steps with confidence. And you will see that on the design of the software, because design is the other key element on the concept itself. And it's really enlightening to see Kent improving and refactoring that source code while he is teaching us to practice TDD. It's not only a lesson on TDD, it's also a lesson on writing good code with good design that is easy to maintain and refactor. So those are the key concepts that you will get from this book. But I have a set of quotes from that book that it's worth thinking about that. And I say that because they tell you a story bigger than the red-green refactor. They tell you a story that doesn't match with many ideas that float around in the community. You will see a lot of misconceptions about TDD when you start thinking about those quotes. One of them is that the TDD call is clean code that works. I don't fall in love with the term clean code, but you get it. You know what we are talking about. And the interesting part of this sentence just the last two words, that works. Because one thing is writing good software, code with good quality, easy to read, looks like easy to maintain. However, if you don't have the proof that it works, it's hard to argue about it. That takes me to the second quote. No software engineer release even the tiniest change without testing, except the very confident and the very sloppy. This is a challenging idea, but I like the way that it is written. It makes you think about the relationship that we have with our code. One thing that I like to think about when I'm writing code and the relationship with the tests itself, it's like a chef, okay? If you go to the restaurant, you expect that the chef 
will at least taste the food. You will not serve something to your clients without tasting it. And please take a moment to, to understand that here we are not talking about writing tests before the code. This sentence is applied to all test automation. However, regarding the topic of testing first, there's an interesting quote that I got from it that is, when we test first, we reduce the stress, which make us more likely to test. And this is the story of many of my projects in the past. And you will relate to that for sure. You know that when you start getting stressed because, for example, a deadline, you start cutting corners and one of the obvious things will be not writing tests. So you feel stressed, you don't write those tests. However, less tests you write, more errors you will make. And with more errors, more stress do you have. So you can see here, it's, it's like a snowball effect. And that is one of the reasons why the idea of testing first is important. Doesn't mean that it is the only way of doing it, but it's a valuable tool that we can think about. We are striving for perfection. A defect will slip through. When that happens, we learn our lesson about the test we should have written and move on. There's two main messages here. One is that by doing TDD, you are not avoiding bugs at all. They will happen. You shouldn't overthink the test that you write. You should accept that bugs are part of the process. But also the idea that failure is progress. When you see failure, you have an opportunity to improve. An opportunity, for example, to write test that was missing. And that will give you a lot of confidence. TDD is not about taking teeny tiny steps. It's about being able to take teeny tiny steps. And I love this sentence because all that idea that you see floating around here in the community that TDD is useless because you know what you want to do, you have experience and you will write the best design for sure. And because of that, you don't want to go to that stupid process of one line of code at a time, having the test failing and only then doing all those techniques of obvious implementation, triangulation, all of that are tools that you have available to you. Doesn't mean that you can take bigger steps. The problem is that when you are teaching TDD, you need to start with those teeny tiny steps. And when you start becoming confident with all that process, you can take bigger steps. And when you feel again that you are not feeling comfortable with something, you can give one step back and start doing those small steps once again. Okay, so who should read this book? I honestly recommend it to every single developer, whether you are an experienced developer or you are just starting in the field. Why? Because I think it's a different way of approaching code. It will feel uncomfortable for sure. But I honestly believe that when we are practicing and we keep with something that doesn't seem right, but many people are saying that, that it works, it's worth exploring. By the end, you might not like it. It might not be for you, you may think. However, I think it's a valuable tool to have in your toolbox that you will use sometimes and others maybe don't. So if you are just starting, if you have a lot of experience, or, or for example, if you have been practicing TDD, for everyone, I believe that reading this book can be useful. And if this is a complete introduction to the topic of TDD for you, I have this video right here, where I will guide you through the process of test-driven development. And before you go, please let me know in the comments what you think about this type of video. Is it worth it? If it is not, if you like it, if it's not, if I should keep doing this type of video.